Hello, hello, it's Dumpet here. Welcome to part 6 of 25 of the College Entrance Test Review. Credit to the Review Masters for providing me with these items. To continue, item 21. 20 is 125% of what number? So let's make the number uh, equal to a question mark for now. So 125%, we can write it as a fraction. We divide it by 100, that's the general rule. So 125 over 100 times this question mark, this gives 20. So uh, we, let's try to reduce this fraction first, this 125 over 100. In lowest terms, we can write it as, uh, we can cancel. So it's going to be 5 over 4 since both are divisible by 25. So in lowest terms, this is equal to 5 over 4. So 5 fourths times this question mark, that gives you 20. Now, 5 fourths times this question mark gives you an exact answer of 20. So 4 and question mark should cancel, which means question mark should be divisible by 4. Now out of these 4 choices, only one of them is divisible by 4, particularly 16. So we can already cross items, sorry, choices A to C already, because none of these choices from A to C are divisible by 4. So we can easily conclude that the answer must be 16. Now to verify our answer, it's going to be 5 fourths times 16. And we can use the cancellation method. The 4 and the 16 will cancel. 4 becomes 1. 16 becomes a 4. So we're just evaluating 5 times 4. And that indeed gives us 20. So whatever method you use, either elimination or just directly solving for this missing number, we'll be able to get 16. For item 22, just use um, the properties of an exponent. So 4 squared plus 4 raised to 0 plus 4 raised to negative 1. And that equals one of these four choices over here. Now 4 squared, that's 4 times 4. So that gives 16. 4 raised to 0, we know that any non-zero number raised to 0, that gives us 1. That's the property of an exponent. And then negative exponents, we know that, for example here, 4 raised to negative 1. What we have to do is bring 4 raised to negative 1 into the denominator, and then we make it positive. So 1 over 4 raised to 1, and 1 over, fourth raised, 1 over 4 raised to 1, that gives you 1 fourth. So we're just evaluating 16 plus 1 plus 1 fourth. Now, I guess just from here, we can already see the answer is 17 plus 1 fourth. So it's something greater than 17. And we can already cross answer A, which is less than 17, and answer C and D, which are less than 17 as well. So we can already conclude that it's answer B. Now here's just an additional fact. A whole number A plus B over C, we can easily make them a mixed fraction, A and B over C. So if I have 17 plus 1 fourth, I can easily say that this is 17 and 1 fourth. So either way, we're going to end up with choice B. For the next item, 23, so this product of uh, ugly decimals it's, is approximately equal to one of these four. Now. It's very difficult to check fractions, so let us try to multiply by the LCD, which is 625 in this, in this case, and we can easily compare whole numbers afterwards. So 2 over 25 times 625, the 25 and the 625 will cancel. In fact, 625 is 25 squared, so it becomes 2 times 25, which gives 50. Now for choice B, 125 and the 625 cancels, the 625 becomes a 5, so it's 7 times 5, which gives 35. 1 fifth times 625, the 5 and the 625 cancel. Well, 625 becomes 125, so 1 times 125, that's 125. And then here, just a simple cancellation of 625, and that gives us 27. Now, since we multiplied 625 to, four, uh, to all four choices, we can, we're also going to multiply 625 to these. Now, you can try to be smart here and then distribute to some of the factors. Now, this is the reason why, because we can approximate our value. So this value, 0 0.489, we know it's approximately 0 0.5. So it's approximately 1 half. And we know that 1 half, when I multiply it by 5, it's around 5 halves. And we can say it's approximately 2.5. So 5 halves, that's approximately 2. That, that's exactly 2.5. So we know that this... 0 0.489 times 5, that's something less than 2.5. So we can conclude that from here. 0 0.592, mm, that's approximately 0 0.6 or 3 fifths. 3 fifths times 5, that's, a, that's exactly 3. So this expression here, 
we can have less than 3. Now this 0 0.798, that's approximately 0 0.8, which is 4 fifths in fractions. So 4 fifths times 5, that's 4. So this part here is less than 4. And then this 0 0.875, that's exactly 7 eighths. This is one of those uh, fractions with 8 as a denominator. So do watch out for those. So this is exactly 7 eighths. I'm just going to write 7 eighths directly. And then here, 0 0.23, um, let's just make it exactly 0 0.23. So it's going to be, uh, in decimal, it's going to be 23 over, sorry, in fraction, it's going to be 23 over 100. But I'm going to multiply 5 because I lack uh, 1 factor of 5 because I, multi I should multiply 625 in total. So I'll just uh, put the times 5 here. And then this will simplify into 23 over 20. So this is a number that I'm going to use to put here. So what's nice about this is that we're able to, whoops, sorry, we're able to write an approximated product of these five in fractions. And we can see here that these two, if I multiply them, so 7 times 23 in the numerator, that gives me, you can do the maths, that gives me 161. And then 8 over 20, that gives me 160. So this is approximately, oh sorry, this is exactly 161 over 160. And that's approximately 1. And this less than 2 fifths, less than 3, less than 4. So these three numbers, if I multiply them, so 2.5 times 4, that's 10. And then 10 times 3, that's 30. So I know these three numbers multiply to be less than 30. So these three numbers, their product should be less than 30. So something less than 30 times something that's approximately 1, we can say that this is approximately some number that is less than 30. So this product is some number approximately less than 30, and I guess the most logical approximation out of these four, well, A and C are already out of the picture, since the whole part that we have 50 over here and 125. And between 35 and 27, it's safer to assume that it's 27 in this case, so we can cross out choice B. And we should answer choice D in this case. And you can try it on the calculator. It is true that choice D, 27 over 625, is closest to the actual value of this product. All right, so that's for item 23. Now lastly, for item 24, what is 75% of 2 thirds? So we can write 75% as a fraction. The general rule divided by 100, 75 over 100, we can write it in lowest terms as follows. We can, have, we can use uh, cancellation. They both have a factor of 25, so it becomes 3 and then 4. So this fraction reduces to 3 fourths. So we're just getting 3 fourths times 2 thirds. We can use the concept of cancellation. We can cancel the 3. We can cancel the 2 and the 4, giving us 1 and 2. So it's just one half after all. So 75% of two thirds is just one half, and this gives us choice C. Hopefully you guys learned something new from this video, and I'll see you in part seven. Bye bye.